Hello and greetings from Iceland. But uh, today's video is perhaps uh, overall not as exciting as the latest volcano news from the Reykjanes Peninsula. There uh, is however enough reason to end it there or where I will also be talking about my photo tour that starts tomorrow. So this is more of a video for uh, many of the geology nerds out there and uh, I would appreciate to hear what you have to say since uh, as I've been saying on a regular basis, I'm not the expert, and when I can, I do read uh, each and every comment, because uh, they do help me to form my own opinion. And uh, every now and then, I do get comments from geologists, and it is the purpose of the channel to help us, the uh, armchair experts, to get uh, deeper knowledge when it comes to the plumbing under my country. And uh, today's tour is all about plumbing, but for the last weeks, I've been seeing this new and strange earthquake location on the highlands, that uh, most likely means uh, nothing significant, but uh, it is just a few kilometers in the north from a place called uh, Kveravellir, it's a nice little uh, tourist resort on the highlands, on a route between uh, two of our largest glaciers, Hofsjökull and uh, Langjökull, by this uh, 200 kilometer long gravel road through some of our strangest landscape, a road that is only open two three months a year. Kveravellir is best known for its diverse hot springs and since I don't have so many photos from there at the moment, I'm gonna use their own homepage and link to it of course for those of you who want to know more, but this is a high temperature geothermal area, one of about 20 shots in Iceland. High temperature areas are usually categorized as such if the geothermal temperature is at least 150 degrees centigrade at a depth of uh, 1000 meters, and the formations out there are out of this world. The color palette is fantastic, but in the north from Kveravellir I've been seeing this uh, earthquake uh, cluster forming little by little, so uh, I used the earthquake web that I'm linking to, to look back in time, and for the last years I see only like 2-3 earthquakes there annually, so this is something new. But my first guess would be some changes in the geothermal activity, since those earthquakes are obviously not big enough to get any attention from our experts. It takes more to shake them from their office chairs. So I did some browsing and I found some activity up there between 1995 and 2005, but in total way less earthquakes than we have seen for the last weeks, as this image shows us from back then. So this is a rather uh, insignificant event and might mean uh, nothing, but I also wanted to use a chance to tell you geology nerds out there and travelers about this place, or what kind of footage you will be seeing on my channel after this summer, and things are a bit hectic overall when it comes to the geology of Iceland, so I am simply more on the lookout now for something out of the ordinary, and those earthquakes might just have the only purpose now to help you with your own travel plans. But uh, let's find something a bit more exciting this time. But I don't know how many videos I've done about the Grimsvatn eruption. That's uh, just about to happen several times, but uh, that's fine by me. Shit does not happen sometimes. And this is a time lapse I just made, but I was in a hurry, so the interval between frames is uh, one month. But I was curious to see if I could uh, look clever and detect anything out of the norm, but uh, that didn't happen this time. But the main reason for this time lapse was that uh, I wanted to see the Grimshot earthquakes for the last month, and the time lapse starts uh, January 1st last year. I somehow had the feeling the other day that the activity was picking up, and the last frame covers only the first two or three weeks of this month, but apart from uh, a few spikes, I can't see that uh, we are moving into something big, and the aviation warning uh, color code is back to green. But anyhow, this time lapse has a few other stories to tell. In total we have seven volcanoes under the glaciers. Bárðarbunga, the hotspot, is uh, best known, it's uh, nothing new there, even though this uh, giant caldera is sending us earthquakes, larger than magnitude 3 every month. And uh, here we have another volcano. It's called the Hammerin or the Hammer, and it's one of the systems that we don't mention so often, but it's been quite uh, lovely around there. And as for the last frame, April, take a look at this location. 
it's uh, midst between the Grimshot volcano and the Hammer volcano. We had this uh, earthquake the other day, but it's just about where we got the so-called uh, Gjálp eruption in 1996, where a seven kilometer long fissure opened up under a glacier, and it was a nasty one, resulting in huge floods that uh, damaged a lot of infrastructure. And uh, it's very hard to see the boundaries between the different volcanic systems out there. So this photo is uh, once again making me ask about the plumbing under there, or how it all connects, and how little information we have about this volcano, the hammer. But I'm not digging deep this time, so let's move on to Öravajökull, which is also the highest peak in Iceland, 2110 meters. An uh, eruption there in 1362 was similar in scale to the 1991 uh, eruption of uh, Mount uh, Pinatubo, and the whole district was destroyed by floods, pyroclastic flows and asphalt, the whole package. More than 40 years passed before uh, people again settled the area, which became known as uh, Öræfi, meaning a wasteland. Then we got this eruption there in 1728, way smaller, but in 2017 the volcano started to expand and show clear signs that it might be preparing for another eruption, and that came as a total surprise. Evacuation plans were made and things got hectic until 2018, and it's been relatively quiet there ever since, so we might have to wait for some decades more, and I hope so. We have plenty of other scenarios to worry about now, but this is however the earthquake activity in Öravajökull since last year, so it's still some life there. And uh, finally, let's look at this place and uh, play the time-lapse once again. It was from here where the magma from Bárðarbunga took off to the northeast in 2014, or a lateral dike intrusion that traveled around 50 kilometers before it came up and created a huge lava field called uh, Holohraun. And we could watch that scenario unfold through the seismometers back then and we can still see some earthquakes along this uh, dike today. But uh, this is enough for today from Vatnajökull Glacier. Nothing uh, very far from the abnormal norm we have. But uh, before we move on to the Reykjanes Peninsula, I want to mention that uh, it would not surprise me if uh, we would get some news from uh, up north soon, or the Tjörnes fracture zone. Most likely nothing uh, drastic, but something to shake things up, like occurs every now and then. And uh, I do also see earthquakes deep out in the North Atlantic. But then, this might just fade out. It usually does, but uh, it's however noteworthy. One for the record. So uh, let's finish this off on the Reykjanes Peninsula. But I did cover uh, it quite well in my last videos. But what I can add to that unfolding story is the map of the earthquakes for the last seven days, and most of the seismic unrest has now moved to Grindavík again, and that's not good news. But then, the seismic swarm just pops up here and there and moves around the peninsula, and uh, like last year we see the earthquake graph look uh, more and more like disco lights. So uh, I'm off on a long travel tomorrow, starting my trip on the West Fjords for a day or two, then I'm off to the Reykjanes Peninsula to gather footage, drone footage uh, especially. My good old Nikon is ready, back from repair, and there are so many subjects lined up for me to shoot this time. It would not surprise me if those uh, earthquake swarms will continue to pop up all around the peninsula, and uh, it's my job to guess where, so I can use my own maps and zoom into my own 4K footage wherever things start to shake, but that's what uh, has worked the best for my channel so far. And I do need uh, tens of kilometers more of flight paths in addition to what I've uh, already got. So I'm going to see how far I can get in this trip. But the drone uh, car charger, it will be very busy for sure. So there might be a few days until my next uh, full length uh, video. But uh, I will have my laptop and microphone with me. So if we get any serious movements, I will be able to upload videos from Reykjavik. And uh, if I will get lucky with the weather and visibility, I will come back with the footage that's uh, not only suitable as uh, video b-roll, but hopefully some bits as well that have their own story to tell. 
and uh, worth uh, presenting. So this will be an interesting tour for sure and I'm hoping to get lucky when it comes to this uh, long drone flight I've got planned. And uh, with that I'm sending you best regards from the Volcano Island, Iceland.